So Metric Server gives us a quick and easy way to have an instant view on resource usage on the cluster. But what if we want, you know, like uh, graphs and some retention, like how much resource were we using a few hours ago? Can we have a breakdown per namespace? And what about network usage, etc., etc.? Well, a pretty popular combo is Prometheus and Grafana. Uh, Prometheus has the metrics engine to collect the metrics, store them, and then Grafana to have some nice, shiny, sparkly dashboards. If you also want to trigger alerts, you can use Alert Manager in Prometheus. I'm not going to cover that one, but I'm going to show you how we can deploy Prometheus and Grafana on our cluster. And uh, Prometheus itself is just doing the collection and ingestion of metrics, but it doesn't provide the metrics itself. What I mean is that we need a collection of exporters. So exporters are components that export metrics. So they are going to, you know, check the disk usage or whatever is the number of rows we have in some database or the query rate on something like whatever. So these exporters are going to be scraped to be queried by Prometheus. So what we need to have, you know, like a fully functional um, metrics dashboard is Prometheus itself, a bunch of exporters to get the data that is relevant to us, Grafana to show the data, and we also need some Grafana dashboards because in itself, uh, Grafana lets you build the dashboards, but that can be a pretty long and boring process. So we're going to use a pre-existing collection of such dashboards. Once again, we have a chart uh, to do all that for us. Um, the, the chart that I'm going to use is called Cube Prometheus Stack, and it will take care of installing all that. Um, as always, I'm going to install that chart in its own namespace. Uh, again, you know, like the boring, predictable way. Um, so since that, that thing is called uh, Cube Prometheus Stack, I'm going to install it with a release called Cube Prometheus Stack in a namespace called Cube Prometheus Stack. The only thing that I'm going to change a little bit here is that I'm going to show you how we can install a chart without adding the repo first. And it's pretty straightforward, as you can see here. Um, two things. First, we indicate the repo as an extra flag, like dash dash repo, and that's the repo. And the other thing is that since we are providing the repo, we don't need to give the name of the repo in the name of the chart. What I mean is that usually we would do something like Helm repo add Prometheus, uh, HTTP, etc., etc., And then we would do Helm upgrade, install, and here we would have Prometheus slash cube Prometheus stack, but we don't need to put the nickname of the repo since we are providing the URL directly in the command. So let's take that command here and let's input that on our cluster. And again, this is going to take a minute um, to set everything up. And it can seem very, very simple and almost banal like that. And like, okay, we're just having like a one liner, but this is actually doing a lot of things on our cluster, uh, as we will see once, once this is over. Uh, so that's going to, yeah, that's going to take a minute. And meanwhile, if I want to see, okay, what's, what's going on and what is this doing, you know, in, for instance, uh, in that cube Prometheus stack namespace, well, I'm going to do kubectl get all in namespace cube Prometheus stack. So you can see there are a bunch of things here, um, a bunch of containers that are in container creating state. Uh, one thing we can do is also use that K9S tool that I was uh, mentioning in the beginning of these videos. Uh, so K9S, uh, this is a, a text user interface like this. And I'm going to ask K9S, okay, go to namespaces. 
and then go to cube Prometheus stack. And now I can see all my pods here. And as you can see, by, by the time I got there, all of them are up and running. So we're good. Uh, and if I go back, uh, there we go. My Helm install uh, did complete. So now I have my monitoring like metric stack. How do we connect to that? Well, we need to connect to Grafana. Uh, so if I look at the services in that namespace, Cube Prometheus stack, um, Grafana, there it is. And at the moment, that's a cluster IP. And I need to connect to that. So we have a couple of options here. Uh, one of them would be to use kubectl port forward or kubectl proxy like we did earlier. Or I could also uh, expose that one with an ingress. Um, so just to, uh, you know, to, to give us a little bit of uh, exercise and repetition, let's create an ingress for that service. So create ingress. I'm going to call it Grafana. I have to put it in the right namespace uh, because that's a little detail, but an ingress can only uh, refer to a service that is in the same namespace. So if I want to expose a service with an ingress, the ingress has to be in the same namespace as the service. So namespace cube Prometheus stack. Uh, and then I'm going to put a dash dash rule and I'm going to say expose grafana.cloudnative.party slash star uh, equal cube Prometheus stack Grafana. There we go. And which port? 80. Okay. And uh, by the way, when you create an ingress resource like this, don't forget the star here, because if you just put slash, then you end up only routing the slash URI uh, and not all the path behind that. So don't forget that slash star here. Okay, so now, you know, the thing like external DNS uh, will notice that we uh, created that ingress. Uh, it's going to add a DNS record uh, in our DNS zone through the Linode DNS API, but that could take a few minutes. Um, so, you know, like for instance, if I, if I try and have a look now, let's see if that works or not. Not yet. So here I could tell you, hey, you know what, let's come back in a few minutes and let's see if it works. Or I could also decide, you know what, let's use kubectl port forward because I don't have to wait for the ingress to be up and running. So I can do kubectl port forward uh, in namespace cube Prometheus stack and please forward service slash cube Prometheus stack Grafana. Uh, that's port 80, except as you may remember, we can't just port forward on port 80 uh, because uh, we, we can't bind a port below 1024 if we are not root. So I have to indicate a local port number, let's say 1234, and then the port number in the container, or on the service rather. There we go. So you might be a little bit surprised here to see, okay, what's going on? I said I wanted port 80, and here it's showing me port 3000, like what's up with that? Well, I believe that this is because this is a service that listens on port 80, but in the container that's actually port 3000. Let's check that hypothesis to see if this is correct. So I'm going to do a kubectl describe on that service. Uh, so that's in namespace cube Prometheus stack and the service is cube Prometheus stack Grafana. And yep, that's what we see here. The port, so the port that we need to connect to when we're connecting to that service inside the cluster is port 80, but the target port in the container is going to be port 3000. All right, so now I can connect to localhost 1234 and that should take me to Grafana. 
Awesome. And then it's asking me for some login and password. Where and how are we going to find that? Well, so, you know, like we could dive a little bit into documentation and such, but let's try to find our way around. Let's see, let's see what we can do here. Okay, first, um, I don't know what you think, but personally, I think that um, having that dash n cube Prometheus stack for every single command, that's a little bit annoying. So let's switch namespaces. Let's go to the cube Prometheus stack namespace so that I don't have to put dash n or dash dash namespace for every single command that I type. Okay, now what do we have here? We have a bunch of things in that namespace. Uh, and when we do kubectl get all, that's a lie. This is not showing us everything. In particular, this is not showing us config maps and secrets and if you've done a little bit of work with Kubernetes, you might expect indeed that if there is a password or something like that somewhere, it's probably going to be in a secret. So then we look a little bit and oh, look here, cube Prometheus stack Grafana. Um, could that be some credential information for Grafana? Well, let's uh, try and see what's in that secret. Uh, now, when we have a secret of type opaque, we have to scratch a little bit at this object to, to decode it and see what, what's inside. If I do a kubectl describe secret, uh, that's not going to be enough. It's going to tell me uh, what I have in there. And that's very promising, you know, like admin password, admin user, that looks great. Yep, in, in this uh, secret, we have these fields. So that's probably interesting, but it does not give us the values. How do we get the values? Well, we can do a kubectl get secrets, and then we can ask a dash o yaml and here we have data and in the data we have the secrets and that's in base64. This doesn't mean that the user is YWR, etc. This is the base64 version. So now we need to decode that. Um, so I'm going to do, you know, just to make things a little bit easier to see, I'm going to do a dash O JSON. And then I'm going to use JQ uh, to get just the data field. I don't know if you're familiar with JQ. Um, if you are, great. If you aren't, uh, that's even better because uh, then it means that you are going to learn about a very cool tool. JQ lets us do JSON manipulation. When you have anything that spits out some JSON data, you can pipe JQ. And so at the very least, we can do pipe JQ dot, and then that's going to read the JSON and spit out the JSON back, but with, you know, formatting colors, etc. And then we can go and fetch some specific fields in that JSON object. So for instance, dot data means get me the data field that was right there. Now, if you want to be real fancy, um, here, you can see that uh, in the slides, I've put us this JQ command uh, where we do um, uh, map values at base 64D. So that means basically get all these things and run them through base 64D code. So we can do something like that. Uh, but we could also do this, like echo this pipe base 64-d um, and another method would be base 64-d and if you're using a sufficiently uh, evolved shell you can do triple lower than uh, and put the thing that you want to decode and as you can see the user and password are admin and from operator. There is a good chance that if we had looked in the documentation for that chart, we would have found this information. But the reason why I wanted to show you that is because later, uh, in particular when we will install GitLab, the root password of GitLab will be given to us with a technique like this. The chart is going to generate the password. Well, 
it's not exactly the chart, but GitLab is going to generate the password and we will be able to obtain that password from a secret uh, like this. Okay, so admin prom operator. Let's see what we have here. Admin prom operator. So that's Grafana. And now we will go to dashboards. That's the little uh, squares here and manage. And this is the collection of dashboards that comes kind of preloaded with that chart. And just to clarify, like this is not something that comes directly with Grafana. If you install Grafana, you know, out of the box, you don't get all these things. This comes with the, uh, the, the chart that we installed. And I'm going to use that one, Kubernetes Compute Resources Cluster. And this will give me um, CPU usage by namespace. So you can see here, let me actually remove myself from there. You can see like each um, color is a namespace. Uh, so orange is cube system. The blue one is the cube Prometheus stack, etc., etc. Uh, and now that's the same view for memory. So at this point, we don't have really like too much things consuming resources on the cluster. Uh, this is still fairly low, um, but later that will be useful to, uh, to keep track on what's going on. Now we have many other dashboards uh, available here and not all of them actually make sense. Uh, for instance, if we click on the etcd dashboard, I don't think that this will show anything uh, because um, since we're using a managed cluster uh, on LKE, like Linode Kubernetes Engine, uh, the etcd is entirely managed by Linode and we don't have access to it. So I don't think this will give us anything useful here. But here, again, the idea is to give us a pretty big collection uh, of dashboards uh, and then we can pick the, the most uh, useful ones and, and sort things out. Um, right, so now we have some uh, dashboards and we can uh, have a better idea on the resource usage on the cluster. One thing to keep in mind with these dashboards uh, is that when you will run Kubernetes in production, you will need to build or customize your own dashboard. Of course, you can use these dashboards you know, as inspiration. You can grab some graphs and some numbers from these dashboards, but you will need to build your own dashboard um, that, you know, to give you a kind of rough approximation. It's a little bit like when we have some kind of vehicle uh, generally, there is one thing that we want to have in almost every single vehicle that's going to be the speed, you know, whether you drive a car or some kind of motorbike or boat or a plane or whatever, the speed is going to be somewhere like pretty visible and important, but there are many other indications that may or may not be there because they don't always make sense. Like in a plane, you want to have the altitude. In a car, I haven't seen a car yet with an altitude indicator. Um, in some cars, you're going to have something about like, you know, oil and whatever. Now, if you have an electric car, I don't think there is an oil temperature indicator there. Well, maybe there is, I don't know. Uh, but as you can imagine, there's not we're, not, we're not going to have exactly the same metrics between an electric car and uh, one using um, an old-fashioned engine. So um, it's, it's the same thing for Kubernetes. I give you this etcd example when we are running our own Kubernetes cluster, you know, operating everything ourselves. Yes, we need to know what's going on with etcd, uh, but when we are using a managed cluster, etcd is hidden from us. It's managed entirely uh, by the provider, so we will have different dashboards, different metrics.